I intend to marry. The Lady Alison Hightower. This is an absurdity. Why did Viserys reject Corlys Valerion's proposal? Before we begin, beware of dragon-sized spoilers that are coming up ahead. So, stay here at your own risk or fly away. So, the first episode of House of the Dragon was clear enough about the void that was left in the Red Keep after the deaths of Queen Emma and her infant son, Prince Balon. There was no real heir in the Targaryen family that would be accepted by all. Furthermore, it hadn't even been a day, and the small council was already discussing the succession with King Viserys, who was still mourning the wife that he had allowed being killed. If we cannot agree on an heir, then how could we My expect a My wife and son are dead! Under these circumstances, Otto Hightower played a masterstroke, which stumped the Valerians, who had offered the hand of their daughter, the Lady Lena Valerian, to King Viserys, Daemon Targaryen, who wanted to remain the heir to the throne, and also Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen, whom King Viserys had named heir to the Iron Throne after Balon's death and Daemon's insubordination to the throne. In the end, King Viserys chose Alicent Hightower instead of Lady Lena, but why did he choose Alicent as his second wife? Was it love? Was it something else? Let's find out, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I brought you something. Who is Alicent Hightower? Well, Alicent was the daughter of the King's Hand, Otto Hightower. It seems that she had been born and brought up in King's Landing because Otto was serving the old King Jaehaerys, the predecessor of King Viserys. But House of the Dragons did not waste a moment introducing who Alicent was and what kind of person she was. Alicent was shown to, as the best friend of Rhaenyra Targaryen, Viserys' eldest child. As is evident from the first episode of the show, Alicent Hightower and Rhaenyra are up together, although Alicent was a few years older than Rhaenyra. Both the girls had been born in King's Landing, and it was normal for a father to know his daughter's best friend. But what Alicent would go on to do to her best friend and her father would shake the Targaryen dynasty to its core. I have decided to take a new wife. Why was the king expected to marry for a second time? So in episode 2 of the show, it was the small council's opinion that the king should marry once again. Why? Well, because he was relatively still young and could father children. Now, although Princess Rhaenyra had been named heir to the Iron Throne, she was a girl, and that era's Westeros was quite unwelcoming towards a prospect of a woman sitting on the Iron Throne. Six months after the tragic deaths of the royal family, the geopolitics of Westeros demanded that King Viserys show his strength. He could go to war, but Viserys was a peace-loving man. Nevertheless, Corlys Valerion offered a solution that would not involve a war, but still it would solve the issue. He offered Viserys the hand of his 12-year-old daughter Lena, but Viserys was rather concerned about the girl's age. However, he knew that the match with Lena was the strongest possible match. So why did Viserys choose Alicent Hightower instead? How is his grace? Very low. I thought you might go to him. Otto Hightower's Tywin Lannister move. We all know how Tywin Lannister gave his daughter up to get married to King Robert Baratheon, all for the sake of a better position and more power. Likewise, Otto Hightower also played a similar move having his daughter get married to the king. Right after Queen Emma's death, he asked Alicent to visit the king in his chambers and wear one of her mother's dresses. You might wear one of your mother's dresses. Young Alicent knew that her father was an ambitious man, but she did not know that he would sacrifice his innocence for the sake of power. The second episode starts after a six-month time jump, and it becomes apparent from the discussions between Alicent and Viserys that she had been visiting him for six months. Furthermore, Otto would ensure that she did her bidding. It is possible that the friendship that Alicent and Viserys shared was purely platonic, but Viserys did start liking Alicent as a girl and a prospective match. When the time finally came, Viserys declared to marry Alicent Hightower instead of Elena Valerion. It was a great move by Otto because he did not force or convince anyone to make his daughter the queen. Yet he managed her to wed the king and climb one more step on the ladder which led to the Iron Throne. But why? Well, King Viserys had grown fond of Alicent. She was a mature girl, clearly the daughter of her father, and knew how to talk and manipulate. She provided Viserys with the womanly warmth that he needed after his wife's sudden demise. 
but I do not think that Viserys ignored the fact that she was one of the most beautiful young ladies in all Seven Kingdoms. Furthermore, she was the Hand's daughter, which gave her enough liberty to visit the king whenever she wanted to, or rather whenever Otto wanted her to. In the end, Viserys was smitten and loved spending time with her. Furthermore, Viserys was getting married for one main reason, the prosperity of his lineage. Marrying the Valerion girl would have made him wait two years until she flowered or menstruated, but Alicent would give him sons and daughters immediately. Lastly, Viserys may seem like a gullible man who doesn't face his problems until they become too huge. He was not entirely amoral. The man practically serves as the antithesis of Ned Stark. So, Viserys was not comfortable with betting a 14-year-old girl, but Viserys had just committed the very mistake that doomed Rob Stark. By not marrying one of the Frey girls, Rob Stark had insulted an insolent old man, and we know how the Red Wedding turned out to be. Likewise, Viserys had insulted Corlys Valerion, the Sea Snake, without whose fleet of ships the defense of King's Landing and control over Restoros was nigh impossible. Yet he chose his whims and wished over a match that would have saved the Seven Kingdoms from the Dance of Dragons. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone! This is a very kind gesture, Alison.